So um, just a quick little background um, info about me. Um, I've been plant-based for about three and a half years. Actually started right after COVID lockdown kicked in because my lovely friend Kaylin, who was a fitness instructor at my new gym, encouraged us to, she was doing kind of an online um, keep you focused about you know nutrition and exercise during the lockdown. And she encouraged us to watch a documentary called The Game Changers. And this is about plant-based athletes. So I watched it and it pretty much blew my mind. And I just looked at my teenage daughter and I said, let's give this a try. You know, this really makes sense. I, I learned a lot about animal protein versus plant protein. And um, it just kind of flicked a switch in my brain. So knowing me, she said, mom, you know, instead of doing this kind of gradually, just, just go for it, just do it overnight, because that's how I've done other things in my life, whether mm -hmm. it's giving up smoking or alcohol, I kind of tend to be an all or nothing person. So I started on my plant-based journey and then I just kept started, I started reading and reading and reading and watching more and more documentaries. So eventually I also did the, um, the plant-based nutrition certificate at eCornell. And this is really something I feel so passionately about. I want to make it kind of my, my mission really is just to help other people get healthier and just understand the benefits of plant-based eating because it is extremely powerful and you have the power in your hands, literally at the end of your fork. Um, so this is my first time doing this, by the way. So if I'm speaking too fast or if you want me to repeat something, if you don't understand something I'm saying, please just stick up your hand. It's very casual here, interactive. Any questions at any point, just ask away because you might forget by the time we get to the end. So yeah, bear with me. Um, okay, so I think we can all agree that this is not working. Um, <laughs> Amy. Okay, that's a good stop. Do you want me to buy them stick? This was working two seconds ago. Are you using a microphone? No, no, I'm just trying to get to the next slide and this um, has just frozen on me. So um it also does. Does it? In this room. Yeah. Oh no. excellent. <laughs> so um <laughs> so the arrows on the computer? Yeah, they're not they're completely stuck. They're and so stuck. and so are the what is this? Okay. Well, what I was going to, I think what the first slide says is that um, before I get going on the power of plants, that's what I want to focus on is being positive and what we can do to help ourselves is that um, we are in this, in this country and in the West in general in a bit of a health crisis. You know, we have since the 50s, we've been spending more and more and more money on healthcare and yet we are not getting healthier. So, you know, there's a lot of technology and a lot of great scientific progress but um, you know we're all ending up um, with all sorts of horrible chronic diseases, and a lot of them are attributable attributable to diet. And there is a lot we can do to prevent them. The way the the healthcare system works at the moment is that you know you wait till you're sick and you get symptoms, and then you have expensive treatments and surgeries to deal with the disease. And there is not a lot in the way of prevention. And this is partly not I don't want to say it's a malicious intent, but there's not a lot of nutritional training that doctors go through. It's all about, you know, fixing diseases and surgeries and whatnot and writing prescriptions and there's really not a lot of prevention. And that is where nutrition comes in because there's more and more research coming out um, to do with, you know, the power of nutrition. And it's not a new thing. Like Hippocrates 2000 years ago said, let food be thy medicine. And it's still true to this day. You know, we, we keep looking for kind of the magic bullet or the the uh, magic pill to fix problems, but actually a lot of the prevention is in the food we eat every day. Um, then, very nice thanks for you. We'd we'll love to show you the next slide. Um, so yeah, so I mean, I'm, I imagine that a lot of you have heard about plant-based eating because it's becoming more and more popular. Um, and what I wanted to explain is the difference between whole food plant-based eating and vegan, because there's a big misconception. Everyone says to me, oh, you're vegan. And I said, well, not really. I don't really like to use that word because veganism is really more to do with 
animals and just not eating animal products. So, and vegans take it a step further, they don't use leather and they don't, you know, all those things. So a vegan diet even is not the same as a whole food plant-based diet because there's a lot of processed vegan food out there. And the food industry has jumped on the bandwagon and they're creating a ton of plant-based food but it's not all very healthy because a lot of it has added oils and sugars and preservatives and all sorts of additives that are not necessarily healthy. So while it might be better than eating bacon or a burger, you know, an impossible burger is, yeah, no, this, I can't move the slides forward. So yes, yeah, so there is a big distinction between whole food plant-based and vegan. Um, and a lot of millennials and younger people are going vegan, which is great, but it's not necessarily a guarantee of your health because you could be eating you know, French fries and drinking Diet Coke and call yourself a vegan. That's not healthy. That's not a good, healthy whole food plant-based diet. So, um, you know, I like to, even though it's a bit of a mouthful, we abbreviate it to WFPB, whole food plant-based. So what is whole food plant-based eating? Basically, it's eating the whole food. So obviously fruits and vegetables, we all know that those are good for us. Um, eating more vegetables, nuts and seeds, which are healthy sources of fats, because we do need, you know, 10% like of our daily calories should be coming from fats, but plant fat, not animal fat. So um, the the plant the whole food plant based diet eighty percent of your daily calories. Oh, thank you. Back to the thoughts. Yeah. This one. Okay. This one. Yeah, I can do. I can do it. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. So just just now that I have my slides. Um, so yes. Yeah, so we do have a health crisis on our hands. And, um, and the other thing I think we can agree on is that there is a lot of confusing information circulating in the media. There's always the latest nutrient or this or that, the magic bullet, you know, oh, we all need more, whatever it is, potassium or, you know, magnesium, and there's a pill for it. Um, and there's a lot of um, bad diets going around. So the whole food plant-based way of life, I don't really like to call it a diet because it's not just the food. The food is a huge part of it. But you know, it also takes into account exercise and sleep and you know lack of stress and you know human connections and all of those things um, are part of kind of a healthy way of living. But um, the food is really the biggest part of it. Um, so we're looking at unprocessed whole foods, not processed plant-based foods. So the more you can eat in terms of you know just whole vegetables, they can be cooked. It doesn't have to be raw fruit and legumes like beans are unbelievable. I mean, the two really the biggest power groups are legumes and leafy greens, but it's really more about eating like a huge variety. Um, so, you know, even if you're whole food plant-based, you don't want to be eating just brown rice and broccoli every day. You know, the more variety you can eat, the better because all fruits and vegetables have these amazing, you know, nutrients and minerals and vitamins and phytonutrients. So you've probably heard the phrase, eat the rainbow, because all of these beautiful dark vegetables are just packed with antioxidants and vitamins. So the darker the fruit or vegetable actually, the better. So even, even between a red onion and a white onion, you know, the red onion will have more antioxidants. Um, so yeah, so this is not a diet. It's not specifically for weight loss. I mean, if you switch to more of a plant-based diet, you will probably find some weight coming off because you're not eating the dairy and the, you know, the animal fat and the processed food. So it will help regulate, you know, healthy body weight without being, you know, like a crash diet, you know, when, you know, people have tried all the diets and the weight comes back on as soon as you change. So this is really a sustainable, it's a long-term change you know you don't have to do it overnight but it's really the, the more you put into it the more you switch this way eating the, the greater the benefits will be but it's really kind of over the course of time so no miracles are going to happen you know in a week having said that if you do make the switch overnight it's really important if you're on medication to go and get your blood work checked before you embark on this journey because if you will come off medications because your blood chemistry will change pretty quickly. 
Um, but this is definitely something kind of for the long term, and it's never too late to start. So this is my new hero. He's called T. Colin Campbell, and he is most famous for writing this book called The China Study, which is, I mean, really, it was on the bestseller list. It was a really important um, study. Um, I will let you look into it. Re I mean, I recommend it very highly, but he's my new hero, and um, he's kind of like one of the grandfathers of the whole plant-based movement. He's still doing well in his 80s. He's fit as a fiddle. His son is taking over his work as well. Um, and I mean, I have a million quotes for him, but you know, a good diet is the most powerful weapon we have against disease and sickness. So, you know, he's basically looking to encourage this shift in our whole way of looking at health. So instead of waiting till we get sick and running to the doctor, we can take control of our health and prevent a lot of chronic diseases are preventable through diet. Okay, he also has his. The follow-up, we tell him a bit of a fan, the follow-up to the China study is called Whole, and he talks about, you probably heard the word holistic with an H, he talks about holistic with a W, because he is a fan of looking at kind of the health as a whole. So instead of this whole trend, especially in the past hundred years, of looking at human health and medicine in a reductionist way, and what that means is kind of getting very, very, very specific and expert, you know, going to see one specialist for this and one specialist for that, one specialist for that. He's more about looking at human health in a holistic way where we, where everything works together in harmony. Because the human body is really quite an amazing, amazingly complex machine. I mean, all the, the, the reactions that are going on with every mouthful of food, there are thousands of chemical reactions going on in your body. And he basically is saying, you know, if we, start looking at human health in such a reductionist way where we're saying, okay, you need to take this pill and this magnesium supplement. He said, no, it's much better to get your nutrients from whole foods because nature is pretty amazing. And when you eat the whole food, it's just, your body has just such a better way of processing it. When you give your body too much of one chemical, especially when it's in a Kind of a foreign form and like a pill form and you're giving your body too much it can actually be harmful to your body but i think i talk about vitamins and supplements later but basically he's all about just keeping it simple really i mean it's that it's that it's that basic is just go back to nature eat whole foods cut out processed foods and specifically you know the leafy greens are, are amazing for nutrients but legumes are really one of the best foods out there because not only do they have a lot of great nutrients like iron and you know minerals, but they're also very high in fiber. And actually, fiber is what we should all be focusing on. We're all obsessed with protein. Well, I'm not anymore. But there's you know in the Western diet, you know, it's all about protein, protein, protein. And actually, I think over 95% of Americans are deficient in fiber. And there is so much new research coming out about the importance of fiber to the gut, the gut microbiome and gut health. Basically, it's called the second brain because it's so important and it communicates with the brain. And a lot of our human of the bodily functions are linked to the gut, including our immune system and obviously digestion. But so many functions are connected to the gut and only plants have fiber. Animal products do not have any fiber, and fiber is essential for the healthy functioning of the gut. So yeah, here are all the things that whole food plant-based people like to eat, and this is where we get all our nutrients. Obviously, vegetables kind of number one, legumes, fruit, and fruit, again, some people are worried about sugar and fruit, but actually when it's packaged, did I say fruit, sugar and fruit? Yeah. When it's packaged in fruit with all the fiber and all, just the way it's all balanced, again, you know, nature is smart and it's not the same as eating added sugar. You know, when you eat fruit sugar, your body just has a, it has lower glycemic index and it's just better processed by your body. Um, tons of grains, whole wheat, oats, brown rice. I mean, if you go to, um, Anywhere where they sell, I, I got a job lot. The um, the what's it called? Like Bob's Bob's Red Mill. Yeah, yeah. Huge selection of oats and every kind of oat and 
grains and things I've never heard of before. You know, I mean, I'm just eating such a huge variety now of all these different grains and, you know, just switching to brown rice and, and you know, Trader Joe's has yellow lentil and brown rice spaghetti. You know, we're seeing a lot more of these products, low process, but, they, you know, it's, it's a product. But um, if you look at the ingredients, it's really just wheat. You know, that there are very, very few ingredients. There's no additives or anything. Um, nuts and seeds, um, tempeh, tofu, soy, and miso grain, sources of protein, and uh, plant-based milks have just exploded in the last few years. I mean, they're everywhere to the point that the dairy industry is getting quite scared, I think, um, because there are so many plant-based milks to choose from. But again, there you want to look at the ingredient list and try and find one that has the fewest ingredients possible, because some of them do have, I mean, there are some with added sugar, and gums and salt and all those things. So um, herbs and spices. Now, and this is something where, you know, I mean, I have always used herbs and spices in my cooking, but I did not know how beneficial they are in terms of nutrients. And so this is my other favorite book. This is actually the first book I read. And it's called How Not to Die. Again, this made it to the bestseller list. Um, obviously, you know, not to die, we're not going to be immortal, but this is how I want to die from preventable chronic diseases. Okay, so this book is fabulous. And um, in the first half, Dr. Greger goes through major, you know, chronic diseases and how all of them can be pretty much prevented and healed through nutrition. And it sounds too good to be true, but there are, there's a lot of science to back this up. And then in the second half, he goes through, you know, certain foods and all their amazing health benefits. You know, flax seed is one of his kind of star players. But again, you know, it's not really about superfoods and this and that. It's kind of a whole symphony of all these foods working together. But he does single out flax and turmeric, which some of you have probably heard is like one of nature's anti-inflammatory. So this is an amazing book. And um, like the whole big section at the back is all just references to all the scientific studies that have been done. Um, but this is a really great book. That would be a good one to start with if you're interested interested in reading further. Anyway, but he explains all the benefits of you know garlic and ginger, and there's so many amazing flavor makers out there that are actually good for you. And this is what I love about this way of eating is that you know instead of kind of ticking these off the list, I have to eat this, I have to eat this. You know, you're cooking with things that taste amazing. And at the next talk, I'm going to be talking about all the foods that I cook. And Kaylin knows, you know, no one cooks this way as well. I mean, there's just, there's so much variety and there's so many ways of giving food flavor without salt and, you know, it's using herbs and spices and it's all really good for you. So knowing that you're eating delicious food every day, but it's also um, helping your health rather than harming your health. You know, as I just find it like very, very inspiring and empowering. Okay, so here's, here's Dr. Gregor, one of my new heroes as well. So eat the rainbow. You can see with your own eyes, you plant pigments for the health benefits. Choose the, the blackest blackberry, the reddest strawberry, because the plant pigments themselves are the antioxidant, anti-aging, anti-cancer molecules. All right, another quote, the most ethical diet. So here he's talking about, you know, animal welfare. The most ethical diet just so happens to be the most environmentally sound and the healthiest. So when you eat this way, not only are you helping your own health, but you're also, you know, saving the animals. And also it's very, very environmentally beneficial because livestock um, farming, again, this is like a whole separate talk really, but um, it's, a, it's a great little added bonus, um, depending on what your priorities are, is that you're really helping um, the planet, the planet's health by going plant-based. It's actually, some people say it's one of the most powerful things you can do, um, even more so than, you know, getting an electric car or whatever, you can make a difference. Like if, if enough people go plant-based, it will radically cut down deforestation. There's a lot of deforestation making making space for um, livestock farming, um, water that's used for livestock farming, and also land that is used for feed for livestock. You know, it's just, it, it's just a huge drain on the planet's resources. That's just a nice colorful picture to show you all the nice mm -hmm. nutrients. <laughs> okay, so vitamins and minerals. Um, yeah, so I kind of touched on this earlier. So 
you can get everything you need from plants. Um, and it's always better to get the vitamins and minerals from a whole food source rather than from a supplement. The only exceptions are B12, which everyone should be taking, not just plant-based people, because this used to be something that's in the soil, but due to you know agriculture and pesticides and all that, it's, it's, the soil is, is depleted in B12. So that's something that is recommended for everyone to supplement. Um, I have it in a spray form, it's like a little vegan um, spray, like fruity flavored spray form, and vitamin D over the winter, because that is actually, um, that's something we only get from the sun that you can't get that from food. Um, so you can have your levels checked when you get your blood work done. But other than that, um, you can get absolutely everything you need from plants and nuts and seeds. Um, and I've just listed a few things there, calcium, um, you do not need dairy to get calcium. In fact, I think I touched on this in the next slide. Um, dairy is so acidic that it actually leaches calcium from your bones. And that's something that I just, that when I learned that, I was just pretty horrified, I have to say. Um, magnesium, a lot of people are deficient in magnesium. You can get it from all these lovely seeds and vegetables. And then most importantly, fiber. Um, if, you're, if you're on a, like a, let's say a keto diet, uh, the weight loss, and you're eating a lot of animal fat and no no fruit and very few vegetables, you are going to be massively deficient in fiber, and that is very, very dangerous. Um, fiber basically, I guess on the next one, let's see, oh no, tells you that's very hard to read. These just give you kind of an idea of that you can get everything you need from plants. Um, iron. So heme iron, which is found in animal meat, flesh, um, products is very, very bad for you. And um, the iron that you get from plants is the kind you want, basically. Um, so yeah, there's plenty of iron to be found in beans, tofu, nuts, leafy greens. It's the Popeye thing. You got it right. Um, Magnesium-rich foods, uh, again, nuts, leafy greens, beans, dark chocolate, and bananas. Um, sources of calcium, broccoli is great for calcium, leafy greens, I didn't know this four years ago, you know, I've just been learning. That is a plant-based milk on the top left, edamame, nuts and seeds. Okay, yeah, so fiber, keeps coming back to the fiber, so, um, the only way to get fiber in your diet is to eat more plants, basically. Beans and greens and fruit and whole wheat keep your gut biome happy. <clears throat> okay, so here are some myths, and I kind of touched on this before. So we are all, I mean, I believe this as well, we all somehow believe that we need animal sources of protein to get good quality protein. It's absolutely not true. Um, animal sources of protein, other than being very acidic and causing inflammation, um, the high fat content, growth hormones, um, yeah, no fiber, and basically, um, we we cannot our bodies cannot store protein, cannot store protein, and more protein does not equal bigger muscles. So I, you know, this kind of blew my mind as well because I just thought, you know, I had to eat fish to get my protein. I thought I needed tons of protein every day because I work out every day and I have my nice friend here who um, is a fitness instructor. And, you know, we all think we need tons of protein. You actually only need to be getting 10 to 15% of your daily calories from protein. That's it. I mean, if you're an extreme athlete, maybe a little bit more, but the regular person, only needs to get 10 to 20% of our daily calories from protein. So that's maybe up to 50 grams. Um, and, you know, so um, plant protein is cholesterol free and has fiber. So those are two massive pluses um, on, the, on, the, on the plant protein front. And you can get all the essential amino acids you get everything you need from protein, and it's a complete myth that you need 
dead animals or dead fish to get your protein. It's just not true. Uh, everything contains protein, even veg you know vegetables, like spinach. And I think there's actually more protein in a gram of broccoli. Like per gram, there's more protein in broccoli than in beef. That's just that's a fact. Um, so when we come to dairy, um, that's where it gets kind of really nasty because there are actually many, many studies, including the China study, that's like maybe the main, sort of main um, study um, came from, is that the casein, which is the protein in dairy, is actually cancer causing. And the, the tests that they did, the experiments that they ran, the studies actually show that cancer tumors were turned on and grew with with casein and then actually decreased and were turned off when they cut casein. So I found this just mind-blowing and very powerful. And there have been more and more studies into you know the damaging effects of, of dairy and not to mention the animal cruelty. And if you've ever seen a dairy like a big scale dairy farm, it's pretty horrific how cows are treated and artificially inseminated. And, you know, people say to me, oh, but I love cheese and I love this and I love that. And I said, well, you know, I used to eat a lot of cheese. I used to love cheese. When I learned that um, the FDA allows a certain percentage of pus um, in cheese, that yeah. turned me off cheese pretty quickly. <clears throat> and also reading the China study and learning about the connection with cancer. Um, and also, you know, when you actually start to think about it, it's quite unnatural to be drinking the breast milk of another mammal. I mean, that's what it is. It's 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 the perfect food for the calf, for the baby cow. It's not designed for human consumption. Um, and it's just it's just a very I find it now now that I actually think about it, I think it's a very unnatural thing. But you know, the government and the dairy industry would have us believe that, that milk is absolutely essential and healthy and they're pushing it in schools and they're throwing, you know, chocolate and sugar into it and they're getting kids hooked on dairy. And, you know, you might, you know, my pediatrician recently said to my 15 year old, are you eating all of your food groups? Are you getting enough dairy? And I really had to bite my tongue. I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, it's being pushed out there and we don't really question it because we, you know, that's what we're told. And, no, surely the, the government knows best and surely the dairy industry, you know, has our best interests at heart. And look at these lovely commercials with all the famous, you know, the celebrities and they've got milk. It's a big money-making um, industry and it's up to us to kind of do the research and make our own conclusions. My conclusion is that I'm never consuming dairy again because I've just read too much. And I just don't want that in my body anymore. Um, we can get calcium from dark leafy veg is like the big hero with calcium. So just to eat lots of greens and whether you want to eat them in a salad or cook them or put them in a smoothie, whatever, just get your dark leafy greens and you'll get plenty of calcium. And then the other big kind of lie, lie the big misconception out there is that we're always told that carbs are the big enemy because they're fattening um, and all these low carb diets. Those are primarily for weight loss. Like the keto diet is all about weight loss. It's not about health because it's actually very dangerous for your body um, not to, not to, I mean, carbs are our primary source of fuel. Carbs are what fuels the human body. Obviously we don't want to be eating, you know, pastry and, you know, all, all the white bleached process, you know, those carbs. But whole food sources of carbs, like sweet potatoes and brown rice and brown pasta and all these things are all essential and beans and fruit, that's all good for us. That's what the body needs and actually fuels the brain. Like it's impossible for protein to get into your brain. There's actually kind of a barrier. Only carbs and sugar can, can feed the brain. So, you know, not pastry, but definitely a whole food sources of carbs. Okay, so here are some myths about plant-based eating. Okay, so the first one is that it's too expensive. So I, don't, I have actually found the opposite. So I'm not buying meat anymore. I'm not buying eggs. I'm not buying cheese. Um, and, you know, a lot of fruit and vegetable out there is actually very reasonable, like bananas and carrots and potatoes and rice and beans. It's all, it's all very reasonable. And also, um, yeah, it's going to save you some money down the road at the doctor's office and in the hospital. So 
I'm happy to invest in uh, in nice fresh produce. I mean, organic, of course, is a little bit more expensive. And, you know, if you can do it, great. If not, don't worry about it because it's still beneficial to eat fruit and veg, even if it's not organic. Um, it's a myth that you cannot get all the nutrients you need from plants, as we saw um, in previous slides. You can get absolutely everything you need, plenty of protein. If you're basically, the rule is this, if you're, if you're getting 2,000 calories a day, you're getting enough protein. There's protein in everything in this diet. Actually, I have to be careful I don't get too much protein even this way. Um, so definitely get all your nutrients. If you're eating a big variety, not if you're just eating the same thing every day, but as you said, eating um, variety, fruits and veg and beans and nuts and seeds, you are getting wonderful nutrients, a whole symphony of amazing nutrients. And the other argument is, well, what about, um, you know, there's everything in moderation concept. And even my mother used to say a little bit of what you fancy. But if you know, I've, I've really been reading a lot in the last three years and watching all the documentaries. If I know that something is harmful to me, like dairy or, or meat, I don't want a little bit of it. You know, I just, I just want to cut it out because if, why eat a little bit of it once I know it's bad for me? Um, so, and also there's this kind of analogy of, of, you know, hitting yourself with a hammer. I mean, it's okay, so maybe you're not hitting yourself, you know, 25 times a day if you cut out, you know, most of your meat or dairy or whatever, but you're still hitting yourself with that hammer, just not hitting yourself as hard. <laughs> um, it's too much work. I don't like cooking. It's too complicated. It's really not. I mean, I think it's easier to cook a batch of rice and beans than it is to, you know, cook a chicken or grill a steak. I mean, it's it's really pretty easy. And especially if you invest a bit of time, like put aside a couple of hours on a Sunday afternoon or whenever and food prep for the week. And we're going to talk more about this um, in the next talk. But I, I actually don't find it difficult at all. You know, once you can get into the swing of it, it's really quite fun, and um, I've tried so many new recipes, and you know, I'll cook a batch of chickpea stew or veggie chili or whatever, and then you can freeze a bunch, and you can, you know, it keeps you in it for a few days, and you can just put aside portions, and it's really, it's not a lot of work at all, and I'm happy to help anyone who needs help with it. Um, the other myth is that we're designed to eat meat. Um, this is also not true if you look at like tea, because also this comes up in all the documentaries, you know, like if you compare like the length of our gut is designed to digest plants, if you compare our gut length to the, the um, contestants of like the carnivores, like the big cats, they have really short guts because they don't need to digest fiber. So there's all sorts of, all sorts of um, evidence that shows that we are not designed to eat meat really. Um, and the last one, why doesn't everyone know about it? Well, this kind of goes back to the whole, the medical establishment and and the confusion in the media and and big you know corporations and big pharma. One of the issues is that you know um, there's not really a lot of money to be made from this way of eating. You know, there's no pill, there's no product really. Um, and a lot of the funding for research is, you know, big farm or government funding. They are going to put money because it's expensive to do, you know, studies and research. So they only want to fund a study that's going to result in something that they can then make money from. You know, you can't patent, you can't put a patent on broccoli, you know, or oats. So unfortunately, not to sound cynical, but you know, this is a, it's a capitalist society. It's all great free market, but you're not going to have a lot. There are studies that have been done, but the big funding and the big um, lobbyists are all from like the big corporations. It's dairy, it's the meat industry, it's, it's people with financial interests. And this comes comes out in a lot of the uh, documentaries as well. And, and it also goes back to doctors, um, you know, specializing and then going through years and years of training. And I'm, I have full respect for all the specialists in all these different fields, but they don't do a lot of nutrition training. They don't learn a lot about nutrition and it's a very, very undervalued aspect of human health. You know, they study become, you know, heart surgeons or, you know, whatever it is, but actually it's almost like you're putting kind of the horse in front of the cart. Like in, if we go back to nutrition, there's a lot that can be done in terms of prevention. 
And it's just not something that is focused on because again, there's not really a lot of money to be made in prevention. You know, they make the money when people come for the, you know, the procedures and and the big pharma companies pushing, you know, pills. Everyone's like, oh, I don't want to change my diet, I'll just take a pill. You know, so personally for me, I would rather take control of my own health and rather than going, you know, to the hospital if someone to fix it, even though I'm very grateful that we have all these doctors when there is a crisis, but there is a lot you can do to prevent and also to heal, to recover from an illness if you've had one. There is a lot that you yourself can do if you want to make the changes. You know, so it's it's up to everybody. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I just want to share this information because to me, especially, you know, after what I've gone through with my breast cancer diagnosis, this to me is so empowering and so reassuring because there is just so much evidence out there. And I'll go into this in the third talk. Um, there is so much evidence out there that um, diet is super powerful, much more powerful than I believed before um, in helping to heal from illness, which is, which is great. So again, you know, the myth that you have to eat animal protein to get big and strong. Well, here are my, my favorite examples of herbivores. Big, strong herbivores who just eat plants. So there they are. And again, you know, people say, well, what about fish? You know, don't, shouldn't we be eating fish because of this healthy world? The, the health benefits from fish are actually the nutrients that are healthy are the ones that they've got from the algae in the ocean. So you just go eat seaweed or algae or whatever. Yeah, but it's, again, and fish, um, if you watch the documentary Sea Spiracy, that put me off eating Fish oh, out of the oh, is it? Seaspiracy. I have a list of all the documentaries and books at the end. Um, okay, so here are a couple of other questions that people come up with. Um, what are the benefits and do I have to, you know, go all the way or, you know, overnight? So basically the benefits are vast. They will help your digestion, it will help prevent disease, um, your skin, it will help keep your um, body weight healthy. You'll sleep better. I mean, the, the benefits are just massive. Um, you can start gradually. You can just start switching out a few of your regular foods for slightly more whole food, whole, whole food healthier versions. So um, just switching from white rice to brown rice, from whole wheat pasta to chickpea pasta, or you know lentil and brown rice pasta. There's tons of great choices out there. Um, you can switch from cow's milk to oat. Um, yeah, then all of these, all of these um, bodily functional functions will improve. Um, and really the best uh, proof, you know, proof is in the pudding, as we say in England, but the best proof is, is in your blood work. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of us, and I'm guilty of this as well, in my younger years, I always thought of food and diet as, you know, just we want to be slim and, you know, look good in our clothes. And the older I get, the more I'm focusing on health over look. So you'll see some skinny people out there who actually are not very healthy. Um, and it's all in the blood work. So, you know, your blood work is basically your report card. Um, and actually, when I, I went vegan in my first year, I was still eating oils and you know, sugar, and I just went plant-based, but my cholesterol dropped from just over 200 to 160 and my doctor she said oh i had to check my records to see if i prescribed you some statins or something and i said no no she said well how did you do it and i said i went plant based so um actually there are some really great documentaries out there that take um they do sort of the uh, immersion programs of people and even in 10 days they check they check people's blood work before and after the 10 days and everyone's cholesterol just plummets they will lose weight, their cholesterol all goes down. Um, and then there's another documentary called From Food to Freedom, which is um, specifically for people with type 2 diabetes, completely reversible. Everyone comes off insulin. And I just find this stuff, it, it's almost too simple to be true, but it really, there's just so much evidence out there. You just can't, I just can't deny it anymore. So I, I find it just super, super inspiring. Okay, so I don't know if these are too small for you to read, but these are some of the books I recommend, How Not to Die, that's Dr. Gregor. This is a great introduction, like I said, and you can sort of flick through it, you don't have to read all the chapters, but you know, cancer, 
liver, blood pressure, diabetes, even um, there's even evidence now that diet is linked to Alzheimer's and dementia. So there's uh, just more and more reasons to at least try this way of eating and see how you feel, you know, start just a little gradually and then if you feel good, keep going with it. Um, Forks Over Knives is one of the really great documentaries. It's a little dated now, but all the, all the science holds true. Nothing has changed there, but that is a great one. And you'll see Dr. Campbell and Dr. Greger and all my new superheroes in that documentary. And the, the logo, Forks Over Knives, basically saying, you know, you've got the power on the end of your fork. It's all about what you decide to put in your body. And Over Knives, I think it's saying, you know, what you eat is more important than, or it's, it should go um, ahead of going under the surgical knife. I don't know, that's how I interpret it. Um, so Forks Over Knives is a documentary, but they also have a fantastic website with loads of information and recipes. And then um, Dr. Greger has started a website called uh, nutritionfacts.org. It's completely um, advertising free, completely objective, and it's really all just the latest research, factual evidence-based research. You can look up every disease, every nutrient, any kind of subject to do with nutrition. So it's a really, really, really great website. Um, there is a book about salt sugar called Salt Sugar Fat, which is basically how the food industry has hooked us onto this junk food. So actually, in a recent series I watched, the um, it's about the Blue Zones. Has anyone heard about the Blue Zones? So there's a new series on Netflix called Live to 100 with Dan Butner. And um, he actually says, you know, it's not our fault that we're all getting you know, fat and unhealthy in this country because, you know, the food industry is just putting so much in front of us, like the temptation to eat all this, you know, junk food and like super huge portions of food. And they've got us hooked on this salt, sugar, fat kind of matrix um, because it's addictive I and mean, sugar is addictive. We know this. Um, so he basically says it's not our fault, you know, because the food industry, you know, you just have to turn on, you know, TV here. And it's actually, there's only two countries in the world where you're allowed to advertise drugs, and that's New Zealand and the US. So, you know, every other commercial, I say, I can't watch TV here anymore because I find it too depressing. Every other commercial is either for a drug or for junk food. So, you know, you've got the food industry, and these are huge players. I mean, they're both huge money making corporate, you know, industries. You've got the food industry on the one hand saying, eat this, eat this, eat this, you know, junk and fat and sugar and whatever. And then you've got the farmer industry saying, oh, here's the pill, you know, so when you're sick, just take the pill to fix it. But they're not going to the root cause, you know, that it's just a band aid. And there's a really great analogy I love. I think it's Dr. Gregor. I don't know if he borrowed it from someone else, but basically saying, you know, the medical institution, instead of turning off the faucet, the root cause of the problem, they're just mopping up the floor around the bottom. So the medical industry is not addressing the cause of the problem. They're just kind of putting a band-aid on it. You know, so if you want to prevent or heal, you really need to go to the root, and that is nutrition. Um, there's some other great stuff. A lot of great books. I have most of them out here. The Food Revolution was actually written 20 years ago. And um, I think this was one of the first books my friend, my wonderful um, friend, Dr. Sid, uh, recommended this book to me. This was the book that kind of got him started on the plant-based um, journey. And this is an amazing book. It does go into the environmental impact, saving power of the plant-based diet. So this is, again, this is a new edition because, again, like the science hasn't changed and it all still holds true. That's a really great read. And then documentaries, I mentioned Forks Over Knives, um, The Game Changes, which is really interesting for plant-based athletes or anyone interested in sports and performance and recovery and all those things, you know, and they have athletes eating, you know, um, chicken burritos and then the bean burritos and they check the blood and the oil in the blood and all that stuff. That's really interesting. And then what the health goes into, um, kind of goes into the corporations, like I said, like the, the economic interests behind all of this. 
and how um, you know, like the dairy industry, the meat industry will actually try to suppress a lot of this research coming out, or they, you know, they try to debunk, they try to critique, you know, like documentaries like the Game Changers, and um, yeah, because it's it's not in their interest for us to be informed and making these changes. So you know, I sound like this radical like anarchist, but really, <laughs> it really I just found it very upsetting when I, especially like the dairy thing and animal protein i mean i kind of felt a little bit annoyed with myself that i hadn't taken more interest in this because i feel like if i'd done this 10 years ago but you know i think things happen the way they happen and now um i'm just even more motivated to kind of take care of myself going forward i think we all think we're invincible in our 20s and 30s but you know i'm going to be 52 this year and i really want to take care of my health and so um, i think it's really worth investing a little bit of time educating ourselves about this because it is very powerful stuff. Uh, Plant Cure Nation, that's the documentary that um, Colin, Colin Campbell's son, um, he made that one. And then there's a follow-up called From Food to Freedom. Those are both really interesting as well. And actually Plant Cure Nation, um, Colin Campbell, that's the one where they do these immersive programs in these communities and they test the blood work you know, before and after. And at the end, there's this big kind of uh, meeting and he addresses everyone and he's kind of calling for like a grassroots movement because this is not going to come from the government or the food industry. You know, they do not have, the food industry does not have your health. Uh, you know, that's not in their interest. They're just, it's all about profit line, unfortunately. And the same for the healthcare industry. I mean, they're making good money from everyone getting sicker and sicker. So this is not going to come from the medical institution or from the food industry. So it's kind of up to us to advocate for ourselves and look after our own health, really. Um, so, yeah, he's called for this sort of movement and he called for, he encourages people to create something called Eagles Pods, um, like plant-based pods across the country. And actually there is one on Cape Cod mm. and I am in it. And it is officially run by Jean Schumacher, who has done some talks here as well. I don't know if anyone came to Jean's talks. And um, Joanne Irwin. Did you spell last name to please? Oh, yes, you're welcome to take one of these flyers as well. Thank you. So this is um, a group on Cape Cod. It's called Plant Bay Cape Cod and the Green Nosh, because they both had their own little group, and now they've come together to form one group. And we meet monthly. And it's people who are already plant-based or thinking about becoming plant-based or just interested in the whole plant-based movement and way of eating and living. And we do potlucks or we meet at restaurants. We have a Facebook page. Sometimes we show movies at the Cape Cinema. There was a really interesting one we did last year. It was called Code Blue. It was about the medical industry. Um, so you can uh, follow us on Facebook. Is there a cost to join? Oh, no. No, no. Um, you can just show up to one of the meetings. It's usually a potluck or a restaurant, like I said, or occasionally a movie. And um, it's just a good place to ask questions as well on Facebook. You can ask any questions you have or share. You know, if you went to a restaurant and you had a great plant-based meal, because that is actually also one of the things we're trying to do is encourage restaurants to offer whole food plant-based options on their menus, because it's a, dining out can be a bit of a challenge. And we're going to talk about this at the next talk because um as as we know you know a lot a lot of food out there is loaded with butter and salt and all those things but there i mean i personally love to go to asian restaurants because it's much easier to eat healthily at a japanese or a thai or indian restaurant um but we'll talk more more about that next time here's mr camp doctor dr colin Campbell again how did we get to a place where the companies that profit from our sickness are the ones telling us how to be healthy, and where the companies that profit from our food choices are the ones telling us what to eat? So that's just something to, to ponder. Okay, and this is, you know, not, not to kind of scare people, but if you do not make time for your health now, you will have to make time for your illness later. And personally, I would like to prefer to make some adjustments to my diet and not spend, you know, three hours a week in a hospital and <clears throat> the doctor's waiting room. So it really does pay off and it's really, it's, it's very effective. And all I will say is just give it a try. Um, 
so yeah, we already touched on this health the healthcare system or what Dr. Cannon calls the sick care system is focused on treating disease once it's there, not preventing it. And they estimate that up to 80% of healthcare costs in the US would disappear if everyone went plant based. I mean that's pretty that's pretty striking, I think. Um there is again the answer. The American health crisis is the food that each of us chooses to put in our mouth each day. And it does sound simple, but there's, you know, there's just a lot of evidence out there. This picture is not very clear. But basically, a fruit and veg, grains, um, and then the healthy fats at the top, um, avocado and nuts, and then here's a cute little rainbow. <laughs> Um, actually, you see coconut in there. So coconut, unfortunately, because I love coconut, coconut is the only plant food that actually has saturated fat. Darn it, because mm -hmm. I love, I, put, I mean, I do use it occasionally. I can make um, you know, curries with coconut milk, but it does have saturated fat, but um, that's the only plant that does. So, yes, sir, you just copy that. Late recently? Yeah. Yeah. And this is the kind of food I like to eat. There's lots of color and so easy to kind of throw together in a bowl. And then do I just keep adding more and more stuff to it? Oh, I don't have enough, or I have enough seed, you know, throw a handful of seeds, throw some broccoli, throw some this. It's you know, the variety is really kind of inspiring. I'm gonna have this Dr. Campion at this point. Any scientist, doctor, journalist, or policymaker who denies or minimizes the importance of a whole food plant-based diet. The individual and societal well being simply isn't looking clearly at the facts. There's just too much good evidence to ignore. Yeah, so that's it really. It's uh, it's not well, it is, it's science, but it's it's some simple science, you know, it's just going back to natural, unprocessed foods and taking control of your health. So I hope that this has at least sparked your interest um you know and even if it means you just add a few more vegetables and fruits into your diet every week um the benefits are there yes um so my three years ago before covid my doctor said your cholesterol is too high do plant-based and i went plant-based because i have grandkids who are oh. it was easy because they could help me with different recipes and so on my husband is not because uh, he's english and he loves his cheeses and that kind of thing, um, but it it didn't bring it down sufficiently. It's not under two hundred. It was two thirty something. So I'm still on statins, but I'm on a minimal five milligrams a day. Okay. Statins. I don't know what it would have been. It's something I'm producing in my own body. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. Hasn't to do mm -hmm. with what I'm eating. Okay. Has to when do. just make if you don't mind me asking, when you say you went plant based, right. um how I mean how strict I was very strict like no oil. because I did not oh oil, no, I had oils. Okay. I had mm -hmm. olive oil mainly and mm -hmm. canola and a bit of safflower. Mm -hmm. So I did have oils. Mm -hmm. I didn't know whole this diet it is without it's oils. Fair. Correct. Okay, no, I did not. Do yeah, that. I mean, everybody is is different. I mean, it should radically bring down your cholesterol, because it does in most cases, but um, we've cut the oil. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the coconut. Coconut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, well, I'm on it. Okay, good for you, though. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Yeah, yeah. Um, besides Dr. Sudara, are mm -hmm. there other physicians on the case that are plant based? Um, I don't think so. I know that there is someone off Cape, not too far off Cape. Mm -hmm. And actually, I went to a I went to a plant based um event in Rhode Island, and they had I forget where I did with a poster, but there's something called the Plant Docs. Um, and I will look it up for you and get back to you. There is a group of physicians in um, Providence called the plant docs and they are all plant-based what i did with the survival process i know there's a lot of telemedicine yes yeah. correct um, yeah i have you know i'm not a young person and i have never had a healthcare professional tell me uh that what i eat makes a difference in my health yeah it's really interesting. isn't that amazing though yeah it's amazing 
And also, I mean, I I used to go, you know, when I was still, still drinking way too much wine, and I would go get my annual checkups. And I always asked about my liver because I was worried about my liver. And my doctor would say, oh, no, your liver's fine. Looks great. Keep doing whatever you're doing. And I was drinking way too heavily. And I knew nothing about the links between alcohol and breast cancer. You know, and I can't, you can't expect doctors to be, to be clued up on all the newest research, everything. There's a lot out there to read, but I would expect some basic information, you know, but they never ask about nutrition. No, it's not, that's not what they're trained to talk about. They're trained to write prescriptions. Yes. We've just been talking with some doctors because my husband has a health issue. And we found that when we asked the doctors, mm -hmm. what do you do? You know, what about, you know, we've heard about whole food plant-based mm -hmm. and several of them have said, well, that's what we did. I, you know, I'm plant-based. Oh. But didn't didn't so tell us that didn't say that ahead of time. Oh, didn't offer yeah. it to us. So when we asked, yeah. that was the answer. Well, that's what I'm doing. Really? That is interesting. And I, yes. Just a lot of, I see a theme in some of the comments and questions, and that's the cultural and cultural and psychological aspect of switching. I, I've been right. Not now, but strict vegan except half and half in coffee with okay. about 30 years ago. Wow. Um, we had a dog who was ill and they said raw hamburger and somehow it got in the skillet. Um, so we have uh, being the vegan. <laughs> but very much all the things you've talked about in the M66 and today it's when COVID started and I'm retired, everything you know at home, I shouldn't have salt. Just leave it out. You can find canned vegetables with no salt. It, mm -hmm. It's hard. Walmart always has beans. Mm -hmm. But the, the cultural part, the reason I mention it, I mean, the English Englishman who won't give up the cheese, when there's a household and there's a difference of perspective, it's very hard. Some people are determined to provide great big meals and they, and psychologically can't stop. So it has to, there has to be a lot of finesse. And I think just, just, maybe negotiation, you know, because it is very hard to change those habits that have been there for decades, but it is possible. I have a brother-in-law three months ago, 62, diagnosed with diabetes. He has an Italian heritage, and he told the doctor, he said, it's going to kill me to stop the pasta. And he's tried mm -hmm. tofu pasta and things, and it actually works, but it took family working together to mm -hmm. do that. So I don't know, anybody who's dealing with others who kind of think you to do this means, okay, now you've gone off on some kind of hippie thing to Vermont. Oh, you're no, not, no, you're no, it's yeah, not no, it's, it's, it's not a true. really, really super valid point. So a lot of people might know about the science one and they've read the books and, you know, even my medical oncologist, she's so good for you, you know, being plant-based, you know, that's great. And and she said, yeah, we talked about it a little bit. And I, I, I mentioned the China study. And she said, oh, yeah, I read that when I was in medical college. And I was like, oh, great. She said, oh, and I went vegan for a little bit. But, you know, then got off it. So it's you can know and understand and believe all the science and all the arguments for it and still find it hard to make the switch. Because it is, I mean, I had to change my beliefs. I had to do like a 180. I mean, I, I have learned so much. But I'm just someone who... You know, I'm kind of an academic person. I love to read. I love to educate myself. It's almost like I was looking for like a new, you know, I'm a mom and my kids are getting older now. And I, I just found this and I've just thrown myself into it because I love learning and reading. And there's just so much great literature out there. But, um, you know, even if you understand it all, it's hard to break habits and change habits. And I'm living with, you know, my husband's not, hasn't adopted. He'll eat everything I cook, but he's still eating, you know, the fish or the steak occasionally or whatever. But... There's yeah. also a question of how much the body can absorb and use without too much struggle to digest. If you've got whole grain versus white mm -hmm. um, flour, rice, whatever mm -hmm. it is, if it's it, it takes more work for your body to actually get the nutrition from that mm -hmm. than white. And so there's a question of what the body has strength to digest, especially as you age. My husband's nearly 80 and he's had... Uh, cancer surgeries and you know he, he's got problems yeah. he's also got an ulcer now we just found out so there are issues to have to deal with 
And that's also a very valid point. I would say that, you know, the brown, the whole, the reason your body can digest the white or even animal protein is easier for our bodies to process because it's more similar to our own biology, but that's not necessarily a good thing because it means it's also going to have the kind of the easy absorption also means like, like the growth aspect of like, you know, the cancer level, you know, it also can more easily become, you know, go into the wrong direction. Um, I don't explain that very well, but um, anyway, so um, the brown rice, and the, the unbleached flour and, and things are harder to digest because there's more nutrients and more fiber, but it's also a slower release of energy and there are more nutrients. That's probably why it takes it longer for your body to process. But it is an adjustment for a lot of people. If your body is not used to eating a lot of fiber, you shouldn't do this overnight. I and mean, I was already eating quite a lot of fruit and vegetables when I went fully plant-based. So my body had no problem whatsoever. I, really, I had no... Um, sort of adjustment, if you will, and I certainly haven't missed, you know, the meat and the eggs and the dairy. I just I feel great, and um, I'm not looking back. But yeah, no, for some people it's much better to start gradually, mm -hmm. um, and let your body get, get let your digestive system adjust, you know, to to. Because I would think like most people are not getting nearly enough fiber, so you don't want to kind of shock your body. So you don't even put plant based margarine on your toast because that's based with oils. Yeah, I don't you just put, what do you put on toast? Uh I have I make my own um, cranberry compote I call it. So it's like a like a healthy jam. So I have cranberries with cinnamon and applesauce. What do I put on my toast? Oh almond butter. A little bit of almond butter. Oh, hummus. 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 Yeah I hummus. love hummus. I think it's great. Yeah. Avocado man. Avocado, banana, fruit. I mean Best thing to have is, honestly, for breakfast, I like oats with berries, a little bit of plant milk, or um, Ezekiel bread with a little almond toast, and then I can slice a banana on it. And date syrup is my new friend. I love date syrup, and the only ingredient is date. So that's my sweetener, the date syrup and fruit. Um, but we'll be talking more about the actual food, like what to have for breakfast, lunch, dinner, all the, all the vast variety of wonderful dishes at the next and I'm deciding what kind of food we're going to bring in for that might make some and yeah. when is the next talk the next talk is going to be on October 24th at 10 a.m and we're going to um that's going to be it's called macros and food prep it's really going to be about the food all about the food um, so I might make some Vietnamese rolls with tofu with a little peanut dipping sauce. Does anyone have nut allergies? Obviously not the people with nut allergies. And is that here? That will also be here, yes. Are you making that? Oh. I might make those now. You guys need to come there. Right. And there's one more after that. And then the, the third one is called Disease Prevention and Reversal, and that is on November 7th at 2. And what I would also like to do over the winter is show some of the documentaries here. Because they really are great. I just rewatched Plant Formation. That's a really good one. Um, game Changes, Fault of the Knives. Um, and do, do um, take a look at the Netflix series about the Blue Zones. So, this chap, Dan Butner, has um, identified I think it's five zones across the world one's in Okinawa, and Japan. There's, uh, I think, um, Greece, somewhere in Italy, Costa Rica, and LA, there's a Seventh Day Adventist community that are all vegetarian, and that's mm -hmm. the only blue zone in, in America. Um, but it's really fascinating, and the common denominator is that they're all plant based communities, pretty much like tiny, tiny, tiny bit of meat, but also human connection and you know social, good social network and exercise. Like these people are living to 100 and beyond with no medication and no dementia. And so he just, he really kind of latched onto this sort of phenomenon and he went and researched all these different zones. And um, food food is kind of, the, like I said, the common denominator, but all these other things kind of all connect, works in harmony as well. The people are physically active, you know, they're, they're growing their own vegetables. And I mean, they're all kind of rural communities, so it's sort of hard to compare it to city living in the West. But I mean, there are a lot of takeaways from the blue zones. Um, so that's that's a really well done series as well. So the twenty fourth is at ten a.m. rather than six p.m. Yes, yes, yeah, are all mm -hmm. yes. Just just to keep you on your toes. Yes, twenty so fourth <laughs> is at ten, and then November seventh is at two p.m. And 
Yes, and then don't forget to follow if you're interested the um the Facebook group, plant-based Cape Cod, and we share information about restaurants and um the next meeting. Need to check when the next meeting is, but um yes, yeah, yeah, so we're an official. Tell us next time when is is it once a month or when is it? It's once a month. We kind of had a little break over the summer because people were just busy or away, so. I don't know what month we are now, October. I missed the September one. There was a meal in September. I missed it. Goes away. So I'll find out about the October one. I saw an ad in on a flyer in Sturgis Library. I called that number and got contacted uh, a man who taught at one of the Providence colleges, oh. and he told me that the there was a fee. It was fifty dollars to join. But that that's not our group. Okay. This doesn't have a phone number. On. Okay. Huh. But that must have been something different. Maybe Jean Schumacher is doing something at two o'clock on Sunday at the South Yarmouth Library. Yes, yes. So Another Jean, way Jean, to connect with this group. Yeah, Jean is she's a veteran with all this plant based stuff. She's also a scientist. She taught science in school for a long time. She is super knowledgeable. I mean, incredibly knowledgeable. And and Jean has been doing talks in libraries as well. She's now doing more sort of she lives in Brewster, so she's doing more that way. And I'm going to start doing the Kind of following her footsteps. Um, I'm going to start doing the talks here and possibly we could do it and set it off if there's an interest over there. So um yes, just helping get the word out, trying to trying to help people get healthy. What a lot of restaurants um are quite friendly, but but well, I mean there aren't many that are hundred percent plant friendly. There's a place in Bruce called Fair and Just. Is it called Fair and Just Kitchen? Yeah. Yeah, on that. Where is it? Fair and Just. It's in Brewster near the Snowy Owl, right on mm -hmm. Cite. That is a fully plant based vegan restaurant. They have very um, fluid opening hours, so it's kind of good to call before you go to make sure they're open. I think it might just be seasonal. Then we have Bread and Roses in Hyannis, it's a, a bookshop and cafe. That is definitely vegan rather than whole food plant based, but everything in there is vegan. And then, yeah. 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 And then, like I said, I like to go to Thai restaurants and I get a steamed tofu instead of fried and you can ask them to skip the fish sauce. I mean, the place I go to, the Bangkok Kitchen across from Staples, they will cook to order. So you can have a duck cook without, without a fish sauce, steamed tofu, and you can also get brown rice. So Yeah, a lot of the Chinese restaurants use a lot of oil. Yeah, yes. well, an MSG and stuff, you don't want to. Yeah. But, um, you know, Japanese, um, you know, edamame is fantastic. There's also all these myths about soy being bad for, you know, breast cancer and stuff. Soy is actually a great thing to eat if you've had breast cancer because it has natural, natural estrogen blockers. Plus, it's just a legume, which is good for you anyway. Um, in miso soup, tofu. There's actually, I mean, I've done a lot of reading on breast cancer now as well. There, in Japan, there is an extremely low level of breast cancer and they attribute it to soy. Um, mushrooms and green tea. So, you know, again, we're not trying not to kind of like pinpoint like a superfood, but there are specific foods that have been tested, you know, to be specifically um, advantageous, you know, to fight cancer cells and cancer growth. But pretty amazing. Nature is amazing. The human body is amazing. Yeah. So we just want to nourish and nurture rather than harm. Um, that's kind of the, the takeaway. Eat your greens, grandma was right. Eat your veggies. Well, thank you everybody. And I hope to see you.